Hello and welcome to Inside KISD. I'm Jamie Garrett filling in this week for Tristan Haynes and I'm here with head coach Todd Wright. No fill in, the real thing. Mm -hmm. Coach Wright is here with us and coach, uh, thank you for joining us one final time this season on Inside KISD and you go into last Friday night's game against Belton, you, you game plan all week as you do all year and then you show up Friday night and you got hurricane winds and a wet ground and cold temperatures. How does that kind of weather really impact your game plan either going into the game or the night of the game? Yeah, and we knew it was coming, but I don't know that you never prepare on how much, you know, can you throw into it, can you kick into it, what does that, what does that adjust? So, we, you know, we, we talked as a staff the night before and even the morning of and saying, all right, uh, we may not kick, you know, so I tell the offensive coaches, we may not punt when we're going into it and to have that, to have that call already ready to go and, and our, our kickers know, all right, you know, we may be going for it and that kind of thing. So that, that part you do have to adjust for. Uh, and then it, it was so windy going in, it, it made that part even even pregame turned into just you know your stuff rolling around everywhere, and and uh, so it it makes you have to adjust, and it, you kind of wonder what the how the kids are going to handle it, and they usually handle it as well as the coaches do. So I had to kind of tell them too, hey, I know it's going to be cold and windy, but if we go out there looking like Eskimos, and our our kids may. Think it's real cold too, so you know that that and our our kids handled it well, you know, and and I think they had some fun with it too as they start trying to handle the ball in the air and you know, but you do have to adjust and. That, you know, that part of coaching is, is fun. So, Coach, we had a chance a minute ago to talk about some of those seniors, and, you know, we hear names and, and read about them in, in the headlines, Spiller and Rogers and Little John. And these are guys that are going to go on and continue playing football, but are there are a few seniors maybe that, that might not go notice to people in the broadcast booth or in the newspaper uh, writer's room that mm -hmm. have meant a lot to this program as you've come in and got your program rolling? Yeah, you know, and, I, and I was looking at some of that, to, you know, today, and, you know, we have, you know, Antonio Brunson, who's, uh, played, you know, outside linebacker for us, and is 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 so beat up every night, and and you know, well, I joke all the time. He's kind of put together with tape and gum, but he's our hardest hitter, and he shows up, you know, to practice every day, and he gets his treatment. Some days he doesn't want to go to treatment because I think he's afraid they're going to say, no, you're, the you know, the tape's not holding anymore. You got to get out, and you know, he twisted an ankle the other day, but you know, back out there the next day with a, with one crutch, and because you know, it's just it just means that much to him, and. You know, but we have we have multiple kids. I would say that uh, KJ Wilkerson at corner, same thing. You know, he had a miss a game earlier from an in, you know a so, uh, surgery he had a couple years ago. But uh, you know, th those guys are 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 beat up, and which you, you know you get at, you know at this time of year in the football season, and and it's it's been fun to to, to watch those guys. We uh, one of our big linemen. Uh, I'm gonna call him Boogie because uh, how do you pronounce his name, but. Uh, he made it through, you know, his senior year, and, and, and grades have gotten better, and, and he fought he fought his way through. So, uh, you know, uh, Nathan Vilchez, another offensive lineman, that that when I was watching him the other night, you know, our smallest lineman, but he might be leading our team in pancakes, you know, just because he's he's fighting there and scrapping. So, all those guys have done a, have done a really good job, leading, keep coming back and working. Uh, in 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 dealing with some of the naysayers and all you know hearing it from you know from in school and but they, they just want to play and they and they know it's you know for some of them it's it'll be their last football game ever you know you get that at this time of year you start they start to to, to realize that some of them it's coming to an end and and uh, and other guys will have a chance to go on and some will have a chance to to decide what they want to do but you know for the for the vast majority of them this last rivalry game against Colleen will be the will be the last one that they they're on the turf for. Yeah, you talk about that rivalry game. I'll let you out of here with this question. And how much do you talk about, if at all, the the rivalry aspect of this? Because for some of these students, you know, they're coming into this first, mm -hmm. second, third year just in the district. But some, this is second generation now of uh, this right. Ellis and Colleen rivalry. So, do you talk about that at all? Do do emotions spike in a game like this? We, yeah, we we'll, we talk about it a little bit. It, it's the difference now is I think. It, Town-wise, it's always been Colleen and Ellison. Our kids, they go to they go to school a lot more with like Shoemaker's kids. So, you know, our our feeder schools are more shared with those. But uh, they've all played seven on seven together. They've all played junior highs together. Our kids know each other really well, and and so that I think really all three of those rivalry games are are pretty important. And but when, when the parents come back and 
and, uh, and, and the former players come back, it's all clean, and, and we'll, we'll let them kind of spread their message about, you know, how, how much it means to, to, to beat the ruse and that kind of thing. And, and around our school, all, all week has been a different, kind of like a pep rally week on, on different things to do to, to motivate and, and to have fun with it. So uh, we even had a, you know, a Canes football, you know, who can eat the most chicken challenge type <laughs> of thing, and, and uh, you know, that, that we don't do other weeks. So it, it's fun. And, and rivalries are fun, and, and, uh, and, and, and they're definitely more fun when you win them. Now, was Boogie on that uh, chicken-eating team? Uh, he, I would hope so. Yeah, we, we, I don't know if he <laughs> ended up over there or not because the, the, the time span was such a long. And, we, and our girls' volleyball team did such a great job. Everybody was at the volleyball mm -hmm. game cheering them on that night, and they just happened to fall on a Tuesday. So I, I kind of uh, you know, cut them some slack on that and said, yeah, definitely you know, go watch Coach Stoley and those girls. At, you know, they're a playoff team. And, oh, yeah. And that, that you know, uh, we adjust our practices to make sure we get to go watch those volleyball girls. So that, that was important that they, they go be a part of that too. Awesome, Coach. Well, best of luck tonight, and I thank you very much for your time. Yep, thank you, and go Eagles.